Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? Well, what is that? Um, sorry, squirrel distracted. It sounds like Angus sees a squirrel too. Um, so I just did a quick look uh, through some uh, different news sources. I didn't see where anything really bad happened last night. Uh, a lot of people didn't do trick or treating per se. Uh, there were a lot of parties that got broken up <laughs> because the people were stupid and they were broadcasting it on TikTok and Twitter and Facebook. But um, they forget that everybody watches that stuff now. Uh, but it seemed like everything went off fairly well. Uh, of course, there's going to be isolated incidences, but you know, Lord answers prayer in weird ways, and it's weird and glorious ways. Uh, we did, however, have a, a full blue moon last night, and. It's interesting because the last time we had a full moon that was seen in every time zone, because usually it's only one or two time zones, uh, seen in every time zone, was in 1944. So it's been a while. The next one is going to be in 2077. Uh, and then, you know, recently they just found water on the moon, actual water. So uh, what we know about our universe is very little. What we're learning is incredible. And a lot of uh, what science has deemed no noteworthy or trustworthy information is being turned on its ear. And there's a direct scripture verse to this. He says he'll make the knowledge of man foolishness. Uh, the, what we think we know, like they always talked about dinosaurs. Dinosaurs died out millions and millions and millions of years before man. Yet now they start finding, you know, they find a 65 million year old fossil. Then they find the actual animal swimming in the ocean off Madagascar. Turns out it actually hadn't been gone that long. Um, what a lot of people don't know is how many dinosaur skeletons are found right next to human skeletons. And they're found in strata that was from flooding. The Great Flood. So, one of the most famous ones was dinosaur footprints and human footprints walking right next to him. Not that he was following him, that they were walking together. And they still can't figure that one out. Well, that's because all that stuff is BS. That none of that stuff they come up with is true. And they don't realize what they're seeing there is a direct account coming from the Bible. All those things were here already. But in the progression of time, our world changed. And it really didn't take that much time for our world to change. They keep talking about how it takes so long to do fossils. There's a guy that did a fossil of a, of a tetra neon aquarium fish in a week. Uh, another fossil they found, it was complete petrification fossil was a boot with a leg bone sticking out of it in uh, New Mexico. No, Texas. It was here in Texas. Well, they traced it back and figured out it came out of a shallow grave from only like 65 years ago. So yeah, the, the, the stuff that they come up with is ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. Then all of a sudden they find a fossil that is it's petrified, but it's the whole animal. Almost the entire animal. Skin and everything. And uh, so everything science knows knows is being turned on its ear. Everything that we know about space, the very little we know about space, is being turned on its ear. And what's happening is God is proving himself through his creation. We're discovering that that the here recently, fairly recently, they discovered there's about 26 different um, chemicals and, and processes and stuff like that that have to be in a certain position for life to exist. If they deviate in the slightest, then life will cease to exist. So these 26 elements, these 26 things have to be in perfect unison and in a perfect position. Everything else that they can measure swings wildly from one end to the other. Those 26 never move. And, there, and many of them, many scientists got saved because of this information, but they realized that the only way those things can't move is if someone's controlling them. God is controlling them. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. And, and when you lay all that on what the Bible says, you lay all that on what we see happening right now um, in the world today, when you lay all that on uh, the prophecies, all that stuff, when you put it all together, you lay it all together, you come to a very, very clear conclusion. God is in control of everything. And there is nothing that happens that escapes his gaze. And... If you're trusting in him, you have nothing to worry about. Search out the things that don't please him 
and get rid of them. Search out the things that do please him and add them. And walk in circumspect with what he said to, to, for us to walk. Simple. Simple, simple, simple. And it, it, it seems daunting, but it's not. It seems like it's something that's almost impossible for a human being to do, but it's not. Being sinless is impossible, yet people say that they do that. But they can't walk, you know, according to what, the, what God said. I don't know. That doesn't make sense to me, but that's the way our world is. <coughs> it is an unfortunate circumstance based in heavily in pride, but also in greed. Because a lot of this stuff has been suppressed because of money. So in our world today, it's very hard for a person to be a faithful Christian. But that's the great thing about justification and sanctification. That's the great thing about having a high priest who walked this earth and was ex and experienced the exact same temptations we experience. There is nothing we go through that Jesus didn't endure. Nothing. He knows what it feels like. He knows exactly what it feels like. And that gives him a very unique perspective to be able to stand up and come to our defense whenever we struggle with things. That's why we go to him in prayer. And but let me tell you, you go to him in prayer and confession and you agree that what you did was wrong, you agree that it is sin and, and you, your desire changes on those things, he takes the burden right off your shoulders. And it changes, it changes everything. So when we start to worry, that's stuff that's either from us or from Satan. When we walk in peace, that's from God. So we trust in him for those things. Now, we're going to be, we're still in the nines. Um, I might try to do the video about the sevens today. I don't know. Probably not because I'm going to end up having a full house here in a little bit. So I may do that on Monday because it'll be, it'll be quieter Monday. But when Psalm 39 here on the screen, it says, what is the measure of my days? Now in my Bible app, it says prayer for wisdom and forgiveness. And it's the same Let's see. Yep, it's the same psalm, but um, I always find it weird about the titles, how the titles come out, but sometimes the titles speak a little differently. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's get into some prayer. Let's get into this psalm, and let's see what this psalm has to say and glorify our God while we do it. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory. <coughs> to bless your name your holy name, to lift your name up above all, to glorify you, to honor you, bless you, and to give thanks to you for the many, many blessings you pour out upon us. We gave a prayer request last night to guard people, and last night you did. I can't, I haven't found anything that was very bad that happened. People went out of their way to change the situation. If they're going to celebrate it, at least they can be safe, to change what they do to keep the kids safe and the kids for the most part, looked like they were safe. A lot of other people did a lot of silly things, but that's that's on them. Father, the, the world is changing around us so fast. It's it's daily, it's hourly sometimes that things are changing, and we just can't keep up with how fast it is. This is where abiding in you comes in most handy. This is where trusting in you and walking in peace, slowing down, putting the brakes on our lives and slowing down and keeping things calm. Me and my wife were talking last night about how almost none of our friends want to come over and want us to come over. And it's because they want to live that fast life and we want to slow down. Our lives are so much more peaceful because of that. It's so much more quiet. Lord, you have hedged us about and protected us. And it has been amazing. And it's nice to, to just be at peace. And to not have to fight with things and not have to worry about things. I can only imagine how much better heaven will be than this. But I thank you so much for this in my life. And I pray for this for every believer's life. Because this sense of peace is incredible. And it's awesome. And I love it. And I can't see anything else that is this much of a benefit. So thank you, Father, for this peace. Thank you for this amazing quietness that we can't even begin to give thanks for or comprehend fully. 
This morning, I'd like to pray Psalm 39. What is the measure of my days? And this is a psalm of David. I said, I will guard my ways, lest I sin with my tongue. I will restrain my mouth with a muzzle, while the wicked are before me. I was mute with silence. I held my peace even from good, and my sorrow was stirred up. My heart was hot within me while I was musing. The fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. Lord, make me to know my end, and what is the measure of my days, that I may know how frail I am. Indeed, you have made my days as handbreadths, and my age is as nothing before you. Certainly every man at his best state is but vapor. Selah. Surely every man walks about like a shadow. Surely they busy themselves in vain. He heaps up riches and does not know who will gather them. And now, Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the reproach of the foolish. I was mute. I did not open my mouth because it was you who did it. Remove your plague from me. I am consumed by the blow of your hand. With the rebukes you correct man for iniquity. You make his beauty melt away like a moth. Surely every man is vapor. Selah. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Do not be silent at my tears, for I am a stranger with you, a sojourner, as all my fathers were. Remove your gaze from me, that I may, be, that I may regain strength before I go away and am no more. Father, we have this to look forward to. The ultimate end of every one of us is death. What hope is there in that death? I used to ask atheists all the time, well, if you're right, there's nothing for us to worry about. We just disappear. But if I'm right, there's everything to worry about. This is where our hope comes from. Because for us, there is not just death after all this. For us, there is not just um, darkness and oblivion. There is something much greater. So our hope being in you attaches us to that greater thing. And many people don't realize that there's something so much greater. Many of them have a basic knowledge of it, but they don't take into account you and what you do and how you're trying to reach us. If a third of us in this world to right now, this very day, this very hour, saw one-third of your glory, would not the whole world be saved? Because it, the, 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 it would spread like wildfire. Well, amazingly enough, all of us have seen a, bit, a little bit of your glory. And there's still people fighting against it. Father, I am sorry for the people who know about you and don't turn to you. I'm sorry for the people who have tasted the heavenly gifts and have still turned away. I'm sorry for the people who have seen you, witnessed your grace, <coughs> and watched your miracles happen before their eyes and still deny you. And even though it's not my fault, I am sorry for them because... How can anyone witness that and not change? I couldn't. I, I had to change. Most of the people I know are the same way. They witnessed you. They had to change. There was no getting around it. I pray that everyone you call answers. But I pray also that every for every one you call one that you didn't call answers and get saved so that you may rejoice over your creation there's a lot of sheep that are lost and I'd like to see more of them receive the truth and answer the call because the only benefit it's only benefit to serve the living God. It's only a blessing. It's only truth. It's only life to serve the living God. There's nothing negative to it. But the world has taught us differently. So we've got to change that. Thank you, Father. 
for these understandings and these revelations and these insights into your word, into your personality, into your desires for us and what you want from us. And thank you for changing our hearts, answering our prayers and changing our hearts, changing our minds, and showing us more things about ourselves that lead us closer to you, but also about others. And giving us the right words when we need them to help those others change and turn. All we can hope for is the best. If it doesn't come out that way, then that was what was meant to happen. Because we know you have control over everything. And nothing will happen without your approval, without your say-so. No one just runs willy-nilly into the wilderness without you knowing about it. And I'm so happy that you're watching over us that closely. Even the unbeliever watching over them that closely. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace and your great love and your great, great, great salvation with, with, without which we would have nothing. That with which we can stand before you and serve you in heaven. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for morning prayer. And some of the stuff I talked about was in this psalm. When... When we get overwhelmed, and, and I've been there several times, when we get overwhelmed by people who don't believe, uh, it hurts in here because we want them to believe, and we desperately want them to see the truth. And it's hard for it's when I now that I believe, it's hard for me to understand why people can't. But when that hurts on the inside like that, it's a natural thing. But we have to separate a little bit from it in order to remain indifferent and be able to keep moving forward. Because, you know, for every thousand people we talk to, one might hear us. But that's why we talk to many people. Because we never know who's going to respond. We never know what person we're going to catch that's at the moment that they're going to change. They're, they're right at the moment when they want to change. Keep talking to people. If they deny you and they don't want you, that's different. Keep talking to people. Until the point that you realize there's nothing that's going to happen. Then you'll have to turn away. And go find someone else. But always be ready to share, to share the truth. Because so many people are under, under deception. I love you guys very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I will see you guys in the next video.